So what is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to share with you everything that you need to know from start to finish on how to sell life insurance in 2024. If you want to learn how to make money selling life insurance, how you can use life insurance sales as a vehicle to change your life, I want to share with you in this video exactly how you can do it. So the first thing I want to share with you is that this goal is to teach you everything that you need to know to start making money as a life insurance agent. The great thing about signing life insurance, I'm going to share with you here in a second, is that you can make a ton of money, but there's a lot of things that a lot of agents do not know when they first get started or even how to get started. I'm going to share with you here in this video. So um, why should you listen to me? You might ask, you know, why would I even listen to this random person? Well, I was just in your shoes two years ago. I remember not knowing where to start, who to trust, who to even get started with, what products to sell. And in this video, I want to give you guys all the things that I've learned. So I'll be teaching you uh, through how to sell life insurance and ultimately how selling life insurance has changed my life how to prepare for your life insurance exam, uh, how you can get your life insurance license, um, how you define a, a company to work with, what products to sell, how to find people to actually buy your product so they can make money, how to sell life insurance, the sales skills that you need, and how to get paid. And also I'm gonna leave you with some five tips for new agents so that you can get started you can take this video, you can actually hit the ground running, knowing exactly what you need to do to become successful as a life insurance agent. So results do matter. Um, I started out with no idea. I want to share with you a bank statement here. Sort of $6,000 in a business bank account, figure out how am I going to make this thing work? I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to find a way. I spent a ton of money buying leads, going through the pain. I want to share with you how you can avoid that, but I didn't know what I was doing and I lost a lot of money fast and I want you to avoid that here in this video. So finally, three months into the business, Business, I did learn uh, how to make over $20,000 in pure profit. So you might ask, maybe this is a decent reason to listen to this guy. But I learned, guys, through failure, through the things that we're going to be sharing with you, do what you need to do to make $10,000, $15,000, $20,000. Now, life insurance is something that you can make a ton of money in, but most people fail because they don't have the right preparation. And I want to give you everything that you need to know to prepare to become successful as a life insurance agent when you get started. There's so much to go through, there's so much that you have questions about. And we're going to break down exactly how you can get started as a life insurance agent. Uh, seven months in, I, I did over $271,000 of issue paid business in seven months. I even include some real bank statements, uh, deposits from the insurance company, which can be teaching you how I got paid at the end and how you can get paid, you know, $20, $599, you know, $1,000 in commissions every day from these insurance companies. And you can see their year to date at that time when I screenshot that was $271,234.04. So let's jump into this all because I really started that I got my life insurance license. I had no idea what I was doing, but I figured I listened to a podcast. If someone else can become successful, why not me? So it all started by going out there and actually getting my life insurance. Now, how do you actually get your life insurance license? And here's exactly what you need to know. It's, you know, by basically you have to have, you know, be eligible to get your license. The way that you first are eligible is that you must be at least 18 years old. So if you're under the age of 18, you have to wait until you're 18. Second thing, you must be free of any fraud or felony charges. Uh, the life insurance industry, financial service industry is highly regulated. So you have to be able to pass certain background checks and you want to make sure that you have no fraud or felony charges. Okay. Uh, the third uh, requirement is that you can't owe any federal or state taxes. So make sure that you're paying Uncle Sam so you're not getting caught uh, unable to get your life insurance license. And you must not have any uh, past due child support. It's weird to you know bring that up, but child support is something that's going to prevent you from getting your, your license if that was an issue for you. And then you also must successfully complete a background check. So make sure you have a clean record. Make sure you're doing right. Um, and that's going to allow you to be the first in a few requirements that you need to get your life insurance license. So let's say you have those requirements. Requirements. What's next? Now you want to start preparing for your license and your exam. And the first way that you do that is through basically getting a pre-license exam. Now you need to have 20 credit hours, which you're going to accumulate. This is the pre-license exam that I used when I first got started. It's called the Excel uh, Insurance Pre-License Exam. Basically, here is practice tests. Uh, it's practice scenarios. It's reading materials. Basically, everything that you need to know to prepare for the test. Because in a few weeks after going through this pre-exam license, you're going to eventually schedule your personal, your first test, but you want to go ahead and make sure that you can learn and study the materials. Speed-wise, just in general, it can take anywhere from 
12 to 30 days if you're being really, really proactive to go through this and pass your exam start to finish. But here's what I use as the Excel pre-licensing exam. Now it's time to actually take your exam. So you've just gone through the pre-licensing exam. Quick little side note for you as you're going through that pre-licensing exam is to study those practice tests. A lot of those practice tests that you're gonna be taking in your practice phase are gonna show up when you go out there and actually do your real state exam. So before you take the test, just make sure that you prepare certain documents. You need proof of completing this pre-licensing education. You need proof of payment, basically that you put money down. Uh, and then lastly, you need to make sure that you have an ID verification of who you are and um, even a, like a passport or a birth certificate could be helpful for you as well. Then you're gonna go out there and take the test, either in person or online exam. These are all proctor's exams. They're very, very strict. You have typically someone who's walking around in the room with you, making sure you're not cheating. You have to take off your watch. You can't have you know, AirPods, you can't have certain technology with you, or an, an online exam through a Zoom setting where they will, will require you to download a software to watch your screen and ultimately have your camera on to make sure that you're not cheating. This is a very highly regulated exam, but what you have to do is just pass that exam with a 70 or above and you will get your life insurance license. Now when you get this, now the, the work really begins. This is when the work, you've just worked really hard studying it for, but now it's time to get to work to help people and make money. So I want to share with you how you can start doing that. So just because you got your exam does not mean that you're going to be successful. You don't have to pick which route you're going to go as a life insurance agent. You can go the captive route or you can go the independent life, uh, life insurance route as an agent. And I'm going to share with you how to start picking what companies that you probably want to work with and the differences as well. So the first thing is a captive agent. So you need to go the captive route and this is what this would be. So being a captive life insurance agent, what that means is that you typically only, only, well, you only will work with one carrier. For example, you'll sign on with Globe Life, or what I was at first when I first got started, I actually signed on with Northwestern Mutual, and that was a captive agency, meaning that you can only sell the product from that company, which means that you will typically probably get leads provided or they'll teach you how to get some leads. You'll have a lower commission though, because with those products, they'll give you a lower commission. And unfortunately, you're not able to sell other products based on the age of health. And I believe this is a really big downside that you want to be aware of as a captive agent is that you don't have the actual ability to sell products that are best for your clients because you're so limited based off that one product that they're telling you to sell. And ultimately too, this is a more employee structured with the lower comp. They're going to probably guide you a bit. They're going to keep you maybe into like a call center, but it's a captive environment with a little bit more control. Whereas I first started off as, as an independent agent. And the reason about being an independent agent that I really enjoy is that you have the ability to sell multiple companies. You have to be, it's basically like being a broker. What that means is that you have access to multiple different, you know, products through different companies. For example, you have Globe Life, or you have Colonial products, or you have Prosperity, or you have a Mutual Omaha product, whatever companies out there that you can actually assign your contracts with and sell those products but it's also you have an ability to sell based off people's you know health and age so you can actually do the shopping for them you can be like the middleman that's going to find the best price or the best product for these prospects to hopefully help serve them to the best of your ability and ultimately too as an independent ager you're typically going to be able to get higher commissions meaning that you don't have a reduced commission rate but the only downside is that you are signing up to be a business owner as an independent agent mostly you have to do your leads you gotta figure out how to get you know run marketing or, or generate leads and how to do your customer service and if you do sell life insurance policies and you got to learn how to sell at a really high level you are taking on a lot of different roles as an independent agent that you just must be aware of okay now it's time to pick a product now let's say you've gone the captive route or you've gone the independent route it's time to pick what type of product you want to sell now there's five main core products that are inside of the life insurance industry um, the first one is whole life insurance it's very important that you understand what these are, but whole life is basically life insurance that will not expire. The cost really won't change for them and it will be there for them for the rest of your life, typically to age 121. Whole life is typically structured for people who want to leave legacies um, and people who want to have something that's always there for their family for their whole life. While term life insurance is great for mortgages, it's great for when you have a lot of debt, it's great for having people who have these large debt or credit card balances and if they pass away, that this policy will be in place for a certain amount of term. For example, 
If you sell a 15 year term, this client or policy owner will only have 15 years. If they die within that 15 year period, then the policy will pay out. If they live any day over 15 years, the policy will not pay out and the policy will expire. So it's important to know how those products are structured. Index universal life policies are cash accumulating whole life policies that are mainly if funded right and done ethically will be there to um, allow for you know retirement planning and things like that. You have annuities, which allows for retirement and um, income in retirement that is a um, whole life typically plan as well annuities are a retirement vehicle and then final expense is what I've learned to really do and that was uh, basically small whole life policies 10 to 40,000 uh, whole life insurance policies that are basically designed to pay for funeral expenses or final expenses if the family does if a family member does die they can have the money to pay for their burial expenses. So once you pick your product, I would really just say focus on that one niche and stick with it. A lot of people jump around from IULs to final expense to you know term insurance. Just find one product that you believe in, that you think you can get really good at and have a great mentor with, and just focus on it. I promise you it's gonna help you a ton as a new agent. Now it's time, now you have what type of product that you wanna sell. Now you need to find the people to sell the product to or find the people who actually have a problem. So it's people who wanna make sure their burial expenses are taken care of or people who wanna you know, you know, leave a legacy for their family or people who have mortgages they wanna protect so their kids don't pay for it if they passed away or people who wanna fund their future retirement. You need to understand how you can get leads and identify people who have these problems and you can go after them by doing a few things I want to share with you here. You can go out there and buy generating leads. This is generating leads on Facebook. There's multiple courses that you can learn. There's multiple YouTube channels. Uh, I even have a course on how to generate leads on, not, not a course, but I have a free video on YouTube on how you can generate leads on Facebook, but you gotta find people who have a problem, who fit that niche that you're looking for, and ultimately you need to target them and run ads in front of them to basically get them on the phone to sell them a life insurance policy. Um, here's an image that I've used in the past that I can literally target someone who is looking for funeral expenses, or they wanna make sure that their burial expenses are taken care of. So you can run an ad, an, an image like this, where people can see, you can see copy that says, if you need to have your burial expenses paid for, click on this ad, and you can get their first name, you can get their last name, you can get their phone number, and then all you have to do is reach out to them, call them. A lead is someone who is a contact that you can reach out to that has a problem, okay? now. Or if you don't want to generate your own leads, or let's say your company doesn't provide them, you can go out there and actually buy leads. By buying leads, you can go on the internet and look up buy term life insurance leads, or buy IUL leads, or buy whole life insurance leads. And there's multiple vendors on there that will buy you um, data that they've gotten. They've done the marketing for you. You just have to pay them at a premium. Typically, these leads can run from anywhere from $15 to $45 to $50 per lead because final expense or life insurance in general is a high ticket item and um, you can sell them. People will buy them. So whatever way that you get people in front of you, in front of you as a lead, then you need to go ahead and figure out how you're going to sell them. How are you going to sell the product? There's four real ways that I've used and I think that are most beneficial. The first one is over the phone and telesales. This is my favorite. Uh, this is basically using your cell phone or using a CRM, calling people who are a lead and selling them life insurance all in one phone call. Yes, people will buy life insurance. They're willing to give you their social security number over the phone. They're willing to give you the beneficiary all over the phone because most people due to COVID don't want you coming to their house. Second way to sell a product is in home. You can actually set appointments by calling people, setting appointments, sitting at their kitchen table and then sell them life insurance by understanding a needs analysis, what they're looking for, and then pitching the product. Or the third way is a hybrid. It's a in-person slash Zoom opportunity where you can get people on the phone, set a Zoom appointment, and sell them in Zoom. Or you can go out there and generate leads in a certain county, and you can actually get their address, and you can go out there and knock on their doors and um, sell them life insurance by getting into the house, okay? So there's the four ways that you can sell. Now there's a way to acquire a client. So you have the way to actually figure out how you're gonna sell it, but how do you acquire a client? There's two real ways, it's through outbound versus inbound acquisition. Outbound acquisition is the most common as a life insurance agent, and this is typically hitting the phones, 400, 300 dials per day, calling referrals, setting appointments by picking up your phone, and even calling old leads as well, is a very profitable way to actually figure out how to sell the product to clients. And the last way is through an inbound model. Inbound acquisition means leads call into you, whether it's a, you know, a website that you put up or a Facebook ad that says call now, 
these are ways that you can get people to call you that go to your cell phone and then you can sit back and take phone calls and go ahead and pitch them products or live transfers. There's sometimes there's companies that have overseas individuals who will call the leads for you and you sit back and they will transfer in calls for you. So pick an outbound or inbound method and go ahead and learn how to master it. Now, you also wanna use technology to teach you how to succeed. This is very important. You wanna have things like a CRM. We've built out a go high level, which has automations, it has drip messages, it has uh, everything that you need so that you can actually nurture your leads and work them effectively. But you wanna make sure that you have a CRM and you wanna use you know, AI to help you advance your business or to become successful as a life insurance agent. Now, learning how to sell is the most important part because let's say you have the leads and you have the script, but you don't have a way to sell them or don't know how to sell them, you're not gonna make any money as a life insurance agent. So the first thing is that you need a good sales trainer. This is very important. When you get in the life insurance industry, you need someone who's gonna guide you, who's gonna teach you, and also hold your hand, who's actually done the work, who actually has your results, and can teach you actually how to win in the industry. Having a good mentor is crucial for your success as a new life insurance agent. Secondly, you need to have a proven script. You need some type of resource, a sales process from the intro to the discovery, to the underwriting, to the discovery again, to the pain. You need to understand what they're looking for, why they're looking for it, what pain they have, and you need to ask them to buy, and then that's how you make a sale, okay? And the third thing you need is a lead nurturing system. I touched on this earlier, but a CRM automations drips to actually nurture and milk those leads and to make sure that you are setting appointments and doing things efficiently to be more successful as a life insurance agent. And lastly, you need a product that you can believe in. Something that is skipped over, no matter what company you work with, no matter if you're captive or you're an independent agent, you need a product that you actually can sell with your whole heart. Because there's a lot of bad products out there, and if you can't sell it to your family member, then don't sell it to anybody at all. The greatest piece of advice that I've learned is that if I can't sell this to my mom, to my dad, to my brother, why am I gonna sell this to a stranger? Now, you need to have some sales skills as well. As an agent, you need to have certain character traits that I believe make agents successful. The first one is you need a love for helping people. This is a helping people business. It's a protecting family business. It's I wanna help you, Miss Betty, so that ultimately that I can put your family in a better position, but ultimately I can get, you know, can get compensated very reasonably as well. So second thing you need is have great communication skills. Can you feel trusted? Can you communicate? Can you speak to anybody? Do you have previous sales experience? Have you sold a product in the past? Do you have customer service experience? These core character traits that you must learn are gonna allow you to become successful as a life insurance agent. And ultimately too, you need to have product knowledge. If you don't know what you're selling, if you don't know what the product does or how it helps a family, you will not be successful as an agent. And it's very important that you get trained on and ultimately learn what you're selling before you actually start selling. And the fourth thing is you need honesty and integrity. You need a heart that's gonna help people. You need to actually always wanna do what's right for the people because this industry is hard. A lot of people would make bad decisions that could really cost them their future if you're not doing things ethically and right by the client. Now sales is very, very hard. I want you to remember this. When it comes down to selling final expense or whole life insurance or any type of life insurance product, you are selling an invisible product. What does this mean? This means that you're selling something to someone who will never really see the benefit, which makes sales really hard. You are selling something that no one will ever see. They will be dead and their family will receive the reward. So you must get good at selling based off of emotions. This is an emotional sales product. So you have to get good as a life insurance agent on how to tap into someone's emotions to get them to buy a product that they don't or will never see in their whole entire life. Now, Another thing that you need to learn as a life insurance agent to sell life insurance is you need to learn how to underwrite your product. What does that mean? So life insurance, here's the thing that I use, it's called insurance toolkits or softwares out there that can actually help you find the best products or help you find the best product for your client based off of their age and your health. For example, if a client has COPD, there are certain carriers that don't take COPD, which means that you can't sell them life insurance. If some companies will accept COPD, you can take them down that route. But your goal also as a life insurance agent in 2024 is to become a medical professional. You're gonna learn what amlodipine is. You're gonna learn what valsartan is and carvedilol and metropolol and how carvedilol and furosemide uh, mean congestive heart failure. You're gonna have to learn how to diagnose people, especially if you're selling unhealthy people, but if you're selling healthy family, friends, and clients, you need to learn what medications they're on, what they're doing to maintain their health, how unhealthy they are they, do they have any pending test results. So selling life insurance, you also have to become a medical expert. I think this is very missed on in a lot of trainings and a lot of people do not understand that you have to learn 
how to underwrite people to find them good products and actually know how to help them the right way. Insurance is just based off your health. So in order to get life insurance, you have to get approved, which means in order to get someone approved, which is how you make money, is that you need to learn what will approve someone and what will not approve someone. Okay, client fulfillment on the back end. So you marketed someone, you found someone, you sold to them, and then now you have to fulfill the product. What this means is that you have to do customer service, you have to do beneficiary change, you have to do death claims, and you have to answer questions. Just because you sold someone a life insurance agent, a policy, doesn't mean the job is done. You have to continue to nurture, to serve them. You've sold them a product that's gonna be there for them for the rest of their life. They might be a client for life. So you need to serve them, and those promises that you make that you're gonna be there for their family when they need them most, you have to be there for them now as a life insurance agent. How does commissions work? You might ask, how can I get paid? I've just learned all this, Peter, but how do I, I wanna get my money. What do I have to do, okay? So I wanna break down the commission structure of how you make money as a life insurance agent. So let me break this down. There's really five core things uh, to life insurance uh, payout. Number one is annualized premium. So you get paid off how much annualized premium that you actually write. So for example, you take a policy, which is let's say $50 a month, you take that and times it by 12, that is your annualized premium. So your monthly policy premium, the premium that they're paying every month, your client, and you times that by 12, okay? The second is the commission rate, okay? So commission rates will vary based on if you're captive or independent, but your commission rate is how much commission you will make from the insurance carrier for selling that product. For example, it could range from anywhere from 20% to over 145%. So it's really important for you to understand what commission rate you're at so that you know how much you're gonna make off the products that you do sell. The third core thing that you need to understand is uh, advances. Uh, advances in nine months and six months, very often, very seldomly, is there 12 month advances, but most of the time insurance carriers pay out nine month and six month advance. A nine month advance means that they're gonna pay up, they're gonna upfront you nine months of the client's payments, even though they haven't paid you or haven't been in business for nine months, they're gonna give you that money in nine months so you can have cash flow to continue to write business or to buy leads, okay? And then six month advance just means that they're gonna give you six months of the client's payments, uh, early instead of the nine months. So just so that you know how much you're actually gonna get paid out. Now, placement is important. Placement means that uh, the client has made their first payment. And this is something that you don't wanna miss. Life insurance agents do not get paid unless they make their first payment. So you have to make sure that your client makes the payment, even though you sold them a life insurance policy, that's not when money is made, that they've made their first payment and then they stay on the books past 12 months, okay? Then you also have chargebacks. Chargebacks do Im impact your commissions because chargebacks mean that you owe your insurance company or the person who sent you the money, money back. And what that means is let's say I sold Miss Betty a $50 per month mutual of Omaha policy, but she makes her first payment and I get affronted all the, the nine month advance. So over $600 comes my way from the insurance company. But Miss Biddy calls me back in month two and she says, Peter, I don't want my life insurance policy anymore. Can you please cancel it? Well, guess what? You now have to owe your all that money back to the insurance company in a debt form and this could rack up and you can have charge back. So just because someone's made a payment, does not mean that you're gonna keep, does not mean that you're gonna keep them on the books for 12 months and there's a possibility that you have to owe money back. And this is very important for you to understand because people tell you all the time you make all this money, but if all your business cancels, you have to pay back your insurance company, whoever paid you all the money that they've just paid you because the client canceled, the, the payment rejected, or ultimately they didn't have enough money in their bank account. So be very mindful of this. So how much to actually make if I sell a policy. Let's give you a clear example. So let's say I sell Miss Betty a $50 per month policy, and I'm currently at a 50% compensation rate. So I get paid 50%, okay? So you take 50, you times that by the 12 months, you get 600 in annualized premium, okay? Then you take that 600 annualized premium, and you time that times that by your 50% comp, okay? which means that you get $300 now. But now the insurance company only advanced you in nine months. So you take the $300 and you times that by 0.75 because nine months is 0.75 of 12 months, okay? And if it was and if it was a six month advance, you would just do 0 0.50. But 300 times the 0.75 and your total for what you made off that $50 per month policy is $225 by sell on life insurance, okay? now. Last thing I wanna share with you is now that you've learned kind of the steps of compensation, I wanna share with you five tips that has helped me become a successful agent and how you can become a successful new life insurance agent in 2024, okay? First thing is that success 
uh, requires dedication and hard work. You will probably have to work harder than you ever have as a life insurance agent. You will have to work weekends, you'll probably have to put more dials in, and you will have to grind. So be prepared as a life insurance agent to work extremely hard. If you wanna make the money, you have to do things that would make you money, okay? Like work, doing what no, nobody else wants to do, and you are going to have to grind, okay? A lot of people get their life insurance license just to make money, to sit back and not work hard, but it's the complete opposite. Second core success tip for you is agents must have a passion for helping others. You get paid for how much you care in the industry. So many people come in the industry thinking about how much they can make, how they can you know, have the mansion, have the nice cars, but they forget that you're here to help someone. And the more that you help someone, the more money that you will make. I promise you that. The third is don't focus on too much on the money. Similar to the care, which is greater than the commission, this is not a get rich quick scheme. And I think that's really falsely advertised from the people that bring people into the life insurance industry. This is not a place where you can just work a few hours here, sell a few life insurance policies, and sip your margarita on the beach and make all this money. This is not a get rich quick scheme. It's a great way to make money, but it's not a great, this is not an opportunity where you're just gonna make no, you know, all the money that you want by not doing any of the work, okay? Last thing, core success is find a mentor who will guide you to success. You need to have someone who can hold your hand, who can guide you. You're gonna go through challenges as a life insurance agent. You're gonna have to go through something you've never experienced before, getting hung up on, on figuring out how to generate leads, or how to go through a script, or how to handle this objection, or how to call someone, how to text someone back. There's so many core little skills that you need, and you can speed up your process. You can become successful way faster if you find a true and pure mentor who can guide you to success. Lastly, to end you with this, to become a successful life insurance agent, you have to get used to rejections. No's are good. Just because you got a no does not mean that you are not gonna be successful as a life insurance agent. This business is filled with no's. People are gonna reject you. They're gonna hang up on you. They're gonna cancel their policies. You're gonna have to figure out how to pass your exam. People are gonna doubt you, but if you can get through the pains, if you can get through the rejections, you can become a successful life insurance agent in 2024. I hope this video helped. If it sure did, feel free to comment below. And also, if you want more videos like this, please let me know. My goal is to help you provide a better lifestyle with your family and to use life insurance as a way to help others and feed your family. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Peace out. Bye.